Hello everyone out in YouTube land. There's a lot of topics that need talking about in this day and age. But one of the ones that seems to come to my mind uh, first and foremost seems to be contraception. And here's why. <clears throat> because a vast number of Protestants and Catholics both partake in contraception. Now, for us Catholics, the Church says that contraception is evil. It's wrong. It shouldn't be practiced. Now, I won't lie. I'm not here to plead a case for the Catholic Church's position. I'm terrible at pleading cases. But I, I want to try and get some of you to think a little about this, you see. Because, well, why would the Church hold such a position? Why would it stand in the face of all of the other Christian churches, the Orthodox, the Protestant, virtually all the Protestant churches, against contraception? And why are the Evangelicals starting to realize that contraception is an evil thing? Well, here's a few ideas that might make you think a little. For a, for, for a Christian, uh, this doesn't apply to anyone else necessarily, but for a Christian, God wants to see us all in heaven, right? He wants as many souls as he can possibly have in heaven, right? I mean, that certainly wouldn't be contrary to what he wants, would it? To have as many souls as he possibly can in his presence. Now look at us who age, who manage to live to the age of reason, you know, beyond nine or ten, you know, when we can start thinking for ourselves and doing things for ourselves, when we can choose right or wrong or bad or good to be obedient or disobedient and what have you. <clears throat> well, back in the Middle Ages, as we all know, um, a lot of children died. Uh, the mortality rate was very low, I mean uh, high. The mortality rate was very high. There were many deaths among um, people that were either very young or those people who did manage to live beyond the age of five lived a very long time. And the uh, median age is kept at about 40 because of high infant mortality rates. As I understand it back in the Middle Ages, it wasn't so much that every man lived to the age of 40. It was more that People generally lived a uh, long life, like we have, about 60 or 70, but a lot of infants died, very young. <clears throat> now, these infants, I, I, maybe about five at most, um, I don't think they'd be very guilty of sin, do you? They wouldn't be guilty of too much disobedience. They're too young to understand the concept of disobedience. But they were baptized, you see. Now, that's a whole other discussion. That's a whole other can of worms. I'm not getting into that. But <clears throat> if they were baptized Christians, and if they were innocent, if they were free from, if they were free from sin, they were baptized so there was no original sin and they hadn't really committed any sins as they couldn't really understand what sin was. So, would that not mean that they probably got to heaven? Hmm? And considering there were many deaths, many childhood deaths, infant mortalities, um, wouldn't that mean a lot of souls got to heaven early on? Okay, yes, there were young souls, but that doesn't diminish the fact that they made it to heaven and made it to God's glory and were worthy of it. Now look at this generation. I don't see a lot of infant mortality rates, and that's a good thing. It's good that people live to see the age of reason and uh, all that stuff. It's good that they get to live life. That's fine. But look at the lives of all of these people, including yourself, including myself. Are we really living for God, or are we living for the world? I'd say a lot of us are living for the world, including myself. We're not living for God. We're not living in joy. We're not living in happiness. We're living for today, tomorrow. We live in worries about 
bills and payments and money and stuff like that. We're, we're worrying all the time, especially here in America and in uh, Europe and Asia. We have, a lot of, we have a lot of earthly stuff on our plates to deal with. We aren't thinking much about heaven. We aren't thinking much about God. In fact, we're thinking so much about here on earth that we're thinking about the emotions that we feel while we're here, like love, for example. And one fellow said to me, perhaps contraception should be allowed. It should be allowed because it allows a man and a woman some time to get to know each other, which is taken away from you when you start having kids. Because once that kid's there, it's all about him. It's no longer about you. He's completely right. When you have a kid, it is no longer about you. It's about getting them to heaven. It's about teaching them how to get to heaven. Don't you see? But I don't know. Maybe he supposes this love is heavenly, this love without procreation. This sterile love. This love that does not give life and does not give fully. <clears throat> it's a restrained love, is what it is. I don't get why people see pregnancy as a disease. I don't get why, as a Christian, having so many human beings that they would die out at a very young age would be a bad thing. I mean, yes, humanitarian-wise, like earthly-wise, it's terrible for young children to die at an early age before they get to become productive members of society and all that stuff. It's terrible. <clears throat> but as a Christian, I can't help but see that all of these souls who do die young, in the Third World, in the Middle Ages, wh whatever, what have you, when they die, they die in Christ, if they've been baptized, most certainly. <clears throat> so I can't understand how, as a Christian, one could be for contraception, and opposed to having children, even if they do die at a young age, <clears throat> because they're denying God the one thing he wants, souls, to be with him forever. And we're certainly not doing a great job of that, bringing souls to him as adults. Maybe that's why he took so many children in the early formations of civilization because he knew he was not going to get very many when we started developing very worldly ways, very contraceptive ways, ways that think about the man and the woman, but not about God. I don't think contraception is a good thing because it denies God the one thing he asks of us. I believe it was in Genesis, first chapter, he said to us, Go forth, be fruitful, and multiply, and subdue the earth. Have we even come close to doing that? I don't think so. So, until that happens, I'm not even willing to listen to the Malthusians, to the women's rights organizations, to the Christians who are concerned about marital love. I'm not willing to listen to any of them, because before all of that, I am going to listen to my Lord and Savior who asked for souls, who asked for people to go to heaven, and he's not getting very many, so I am denying anyone contraception. I deny that as a good. Because as yet, we have failed to subdue the earth. We have resources. We have plenty of resources. It's a manner of getting them to people. We can take care of our children if we so like. But even if we can't, if we take care of them as well as we can with what few resources we do have, we're doing God's will. No more and no less. Even if they do die young, as long as we aren't negligent of them, we're not doing anything wrong, nothing at all. In fact, we're doing a good thing. We're sending souls to heaven, as many souls as possible. 
I don't care if there's dissenters. I'm just voicing my opinion. And my opinion is, and I'm not sure, but I think it's the church's too. <clears throat> like I say, if the church disagrees with me, go with them, not with me. But I think, I think they say, I think they agree with me. That bringing souls into the world, only to have them die a few years later, is not a bad thing, because they will go to heaven. Genghis Khan 44 here, out.